striking things when one looks at the study of Christian origins is, is to some extent the way in which people are continuing in some ways to do the same things. At one point we thought that history was dead and that uh, you, we would be proceeding synchronically, that diachronic approaches were uh, problematic and um, difficult and we probably said all we needed to say. Um, and yet now you have a situation where, for instance, we have a journal for the study of the historical Jesus, and I think we even have a journal now for the study of the historical Paul. And um, So history is um, uh, alive and kicking um, in a way that one might not have imagined it to be uh, when one looked at shifts in hermeneutical positions in, in the 1990s in particular. So I think that's one of the, one of the striking things about uh, uh, that the number of books that continue to be produced about the historical Jesus, about facets of Paul's uh, uh, theology, um, um, is, is very striking. I suppose also what continues to be of great interest is the relationship of Christianity to Judaism. One of the things that we've seen as, as one of the real central areas of discussion, which of course takes us into the second century, but also uh, begins with the New Testament, is the way in which a previous model of the parting of the ways has come under attack um, and how now people have a much more nuanced and fragmented view of how separation took place between Judaism and Christianity and a much greater sense, I think, of continuities between Christianity and Judaism uh, rather than discontinuity. So for instance, Paula Fredrickson, I think, is going to bring out a vast book on Paul in which she argues, you know, for Paul setting very much within within Judaism. And to some extent, it seems to me this is a consequence of cultural changes that have occurred since the Holocaust that have worked their way through into our study. It's, I think, also in, in the case of the recent trends in, in the study of Jewish-Christian relations, aspects of post-modernity have come in, the notion of constructed identities, the notion of uh, historical winners, so when you look at Justin Martyr and you see him um, uh, presenting himself as very different from um, Trifo, the Jew, this is of course Justin constructing um, difference, it's not Justin, it's, just, it's not Justin necessarily reflecting difference, the difference more broadly held on the ground by uh, the wider population of Jews and Christians. So that I think is 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 a, is, a, is a striking so a striking change and has really elicited a lot of a lot of discussion um, and I suppose you, you see that too in the way in which people who don't necessarily have a view on the parting of the ways but nevertheless continue to obsess about the extent to which we can call Paul Jewish or not I mean even that comes out in someone like John Barclay's recent book um, on Paul and the gift which you know, at the end, where he talks about incongruity, he's still very much taken up with this notion about what incongruity does to Paul's view uh, of the Torah and of Israel. And in the end, he wants to sort of transcend the question of whether he's pro or anti-Jewish. Um, uh, but still, he he is not not mesmerised by the problem, but the problem is is one that won't uh, won't go away. So I think that's something that uh, has certainly um, um, become a continues to be a kind of storm centre uh, of discussion. I've pointed also to, in, in earlier comments I've made, to points about reception. It seems to me that this has become the new, I mean, it's not so much a study, it can be a study of Christian origins, but it can also be a, a, a more wide-ranging kind of study. So in its study, in the relation to, to Christian origins, it can be the study of the way Paul is received in the second century and the extent to which uh, um, the reception of Paul, like for instance, I saw a thesis recently done in Oxford, the extent to which um, you know people receive Paul in a way that uh, in, in the um, uh, second century that reflects the new perspective more than it reflects a kind of Lutheran view. So um, history then, the history of reception inform, is informed by sort of current debates um, within the field, and we try and see how those map out onto. But also reception, it seems to me, has become quite trendy amongst people who just want to look at the way the Bible is is received in all sorts of areas. And I remain um, sort of ambivalent about it, partly because it seems to me that if you're trained to do the New Testament and you decide to write about Martin Luther's uh, interpretation of Galatians 2, uh, well, really, you should be an expert in, in um, 
the area of Reformation studies or something of that description. Um, and I think that no one is really agreed on the purpose of, of this engagement. For some people, of course, re reception studies is all about the kind of hermeneutical issues I referred to before. So it's all about undercutting the notion uh, that these texts sit easily with any one interpretation, that they've always been received in multiple ways, whether that, that be in written form or um, in liturgy or in song or whatever. So there's a kind of attempt to promote the multifarious reception as a kind of attack upon historicism. Um, for others, it's simply rejoicing in the richness of the, of the words that, uh, that, that, are, that, are in, that are in the Bible. Um, and for others, it's an interesting study in the way context affects. But what the end result of all this is, it's not really clear because different people have different views on reception. You might say, that's very good academically. Um, but I'm always left sometimes, particularly those new books that uh, Christopher Rowland and others have edited, the, I think the Blackwell's Reception series, I don't know if you've seen those ones, but I'm always left at the end saying, so what? You know, I, you've told me what Charles Wesley said about, or John Wesley said about this, and you've told me what uh, Milton said about this, and you know, but in the end, what am I meant to take away from it? Uh, is it just simply interesting? I mean, lots of things are interesting. You know, this room is interesting. Um, so, you know, is it just about interest? You know, you're, you're, you're a kind of tourist uh, of reception, or is there a point to it? And I suppose different people bring different um, things to it.